Thank you very much, Sages, for the invitation to speak on the topic of flexible robotic endoscopy. Professor Ho is the co-founder of Endomaster Private Limited. I am Dr. Hang Ling Khan, and on behalf of Professor Lawrence Ho, we are presenting from the National University of Singapore. Flexible robotic endoscopic systems have gained great interest in the last decade and we believe that they have the potential to change the future of ESD and EMR. By first understanding the challenges faced by endoscopists performing ESD and EMR using current endoscopic instruments, we can then better comprehend how the unique features of the flexible robotic endoscope provides exclusive advantages to the endoscopist and can potentially change the future of EMR and ESD. Nevertheless, for the flexible robotic endoscope to be adopted into mainstream clinical practice, its clinical safety and cost effectiveness must first be demonstrated. Endoscopy began as a tool for diagnosing pathologies in the gastrointestinal tract. Over the decades, the endoscope has evolved to allow endoscopists to perform complex therapeutic procedures. But the challenge remains that the endoscopic instruments are rigid and there is only a single channel to insert the instruments. That essentially results in a one-armed surgeon trying to operate using instruments that lack degrees of freedom. That means that achieving triangulation becomes a nearly insurmountable obstacle. Without the ability to perform triangulation, obtaining adequate tissue retraction and exposure is extremely challenging. This then results in a higher rate of complications, particularly inadvertent perforations that may result during the dissection process. Unfortunately, should a perforation occur, current endoscopic instruments do not allow endoscopic suturing to be performed. Eventually, the patient would require invasive surgical interventions to resolve the complication. The flexible robotic endoscope can overcome these challenges and change the future of EMR and ESD. Previously, we could only use a rigid endoscopic instrument, but now with the robotic endoscope, we can use flexible robotic arms that can move in whichever direction is required to achieve triangulation. Previously, when we encountered perforations, we were not able to perform suturing. However, with the suturing device that is adapted to the robotic endoscope, these perforations can be sutured close. The Endomaster E system consists of two robotic arms. They are interchangeable, able to rotate 360 degrees and have 9 degrees of freedom each. This allows the endoscopist to achieve triangulation, superior tissue retraction and importantly, optimal exposure of the operating field. The robotic endoscope is connected to the standard patient side card with high-definition visual display visible to the endoscopist controlling the endoscope. Another high-definition monitor is set up for the surgeon controlling the robotic endoscope from the console. This setup allows the robotic endoscope to be telemanipulated. The telemanipulation feature ensures that endoscopists focus their efforts on performing the task at hand rather than being involved in tedious repetitive manual tasks required in conventional endoscopy. In this video, the left arm is the robotic grasper and the right arm is the hook diatomy. Both arms of the robotic endoscope are interchangeable. They are highly flexible and can be maneuvered into whichever direction is required. These advantages are especially crucial in reducing the complication rates and time taken to perform complex therapeutic endoscopic procedures. To allow endoscopists to perform endoscopic suturing, we developed the suturing device. The needle grasper is loaded with a suturing needle and both its jaws are able to lock and switch the needle. It has 5 degrees of freedom, making suturing an easily achievable task even through endoscopic methods.
The suturing device mimics the arms of the surgeon and allows for surgical suturing to be performed endoscopically. Hence, should a perforation occur during dissection, surgical interventions may not be required to suture the perforation. In our trowel, we inserted the needle driver together with the guide wire and suture needle. Then we inserted the tissue grasper. Both arms can be rotated 360 degrees. Then we loaded the needle into the needle driver, which is the right robotic arm. The needle is loaded by pulling on the guide wire externally to align the needle. Once the needle is loaded, it can be switched between the arms of the needle driver and the guide wire is subsequently removed. These unique features of the flexible robotic endoscope confer important benefits to the endoscopist. One of the main challenges of using conventional endoscopy to perform ESD is the steep learning curve that the endoscopists have to mount. However, the use of the robotic endoscope allows procedurists to mount this learning curve very quickly. We performed a prospective study comparing the outcomes of performing ESD using the Endomaster E system in an ex vivo porcine stomach model among individuals with and without experience in endoscopy. We marked out multiple standardized lesions of 20 mm square on an ex vivo porcine stomach. The operative time and size of specimen obtained by each participant were recorded. From the dissection process, we observed that the expert endoscopists were more experienced and could complete the ESD more quickly with no complications. In the novice group, each participant received basic training in controlling the Endomaster E system prior to the ESD procedure. There was a trend towards longer operative time, primarily because of the extra time taken to achieve mucosa retraction and perform submucosa dissection. Nevertheless, the use of the robotic endoscope allowed novices to complete dissection in less than 10 minutes. The Flex Robotic System from Med Robotics has also been demonstrated to allow ESD novices to perform ESD more effectively as compared with using conventional endoscopy. A randomized controlled trial was performed using the Flex Robotic System. The authors compared the outcomes of ESD on an ex vivo bovine colon model using conventional endoscopy versus using robotic endoscopy. The primary outcome was completeness of on-block resection, and the secondary outcomes included differences in procedure time and perforation rates. Complete on-block resection was achieved in all ESD performed endoscopically, but only in 50% of ESD performed using conventional endoscopy. This difference was statistically significant. The total procedure time and dissection time was also significantly lower in ESD performed using robotic endoscopy as compared to ESD performed using conventional endoscopy. Here, the authors compare robot-assisted ESD with conventional ESD. The use of the robotic endoscope provides optimal tissue retraction for the procedurist to accurately identify the different tissue layers during the dissection process. Secondly, using the Endomaster E system can potentially shorten the duration of the procedure. We conducted a multi-center prospective study of five patients with early-stage gastric neoplasia limited to the mucosal layer. After markings and circumferential mucosal incision, submucosal dissection was performed using the Endomaster E system. The mean submucosal dissection time was 18.6 minutes and the mean procedural time was 39 minutes for an average gastric region size of 2.2 cm. For all five patients enrolled in this human trial, Complete resections of the gastric lesions were achieved with no perioperative complications. Three patients were discharged from the hospital within 12 hours and two patients were discharged on the third day post-procedure.
A 30-day post-operative gastroscopy also demonstrated healing of the previous ESD sites with no residual or recurrent tumors. This is in stark contrast to the average time required to perform ESD using conventional endoscopy, which usually requires about 80 minutes and has a higher complication rate. The two most common complications encountered when performing ESD is perforation and bleeding. The robotic endoscope allows for management of these complications via endoscopic methods instead of surgical methods. During dissection, it is inevitable that a certain amount of bleeding will be encountered despite optimal tissue retraction and exposure of the operating field. The two-arm capability of the robotic endoscope allows procedures to achieve hemostasis using the robotic hook cautery. This video shows how the grasping arm is able to expose the bleeding vessel and grasp it at close range. Then, the cautery arm applies the hemostatic current to achieve hemostasis. With our suturing device, the tissue edge can be easily grasped and inverted using the robotic grasper and the unique design of the needle holder allows procedures to suture effortlessly without the need to rotate the needle perpendicular to the tissue. The suturing device allows procedures to secure perforations should they occur during resection. Here is a video of how we perform suturing using the robotic endoscope. Using the tissue grasper, which is the left robotic arm, we now grasp and evert the tissue edge. Then the needle is driven through the tissue. The needle is then switched to the opposite arm of the needle driver, and the opposite tissue edge is now grasped and inverted with the tissue grasper, which is the left robotic arm. The needle is then driven through the tissue. The needle is then switched to the opposite arm of the needle driver, and the suture is then spooled. Knots are then tied by passing the needle between arms of the needle driver. And the knot is secured. The suture is cut. The process of suturing required 11 minutes and the process of knot tying required 4 minutes. The next step for the robotic endoscope is for it to be adopted into mainstream clinical practice. For that to occur, clinical safety and cost efficacy must be demonstrated, and this can be achieved by performing large-scale human clinical trials. In these trials, collecting clinical variables are crucial for determining clinical safety. Safety endpoints such as major adverse events and performance endpoints such as technical success of procedures provide important data prior to clinical adoption of the robotic endoscope. To determine cost efficacy, health technology variables such as value-driven endpoints should also be collected during the trials. Finally, just as laparoscopy has advanced to the use of surgical robots, we believe that the ultimate goal is for conventional endoscopy to progress to robotic endoscopy using flexible robotic endoscopes. This is vital because performing EMR and ESD using traditional endoscopic instruments is challenging. With the robotic endoscope, procedures can achieve triangulation, adequate tissue retraction, and optimal exposure of the operating field. This will allow endoscopists to perform complex therapeutic endoscopic procedures with reduced difficulty and potentially lower complication rates. Nevertheless, a successful robotic endoscope must provide beyond the basic requirement of a high-functioning endoscopic resection tool. Moving forward, Clinical safety and cost efficacy of the robotic endoscope must be demonstrated prior to adoption into clinical practice. Thank you.